If you don't know what your expectation of yourself is, you're probably going to fear judgment. If you don't know what to expect from yourself, how could you ever not be afraid of what everybody else is expecting of you too? The person who owns their insecurities is actually less insecure. When you hide insecurities, they get bigger. When you reveal insecurities, they, they get smaller. It's one of those weird dualities, one of those weird paradoxes. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another episode of Next Level University, where we help you level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode. It was episode number 1,501, The Thing That Makes You The Happiest Also Makes You The Saddest. There was a question mark at the end that I didn't enunciate properly when we did the episode. So there's a question mark. Saddest? Okay. Today, for episode number 1,502, we judge ourselves more than others judge us. Tara and I went to a, w a wedding last weekend, and I knew two people there, three people, I guess. Other than that, not a soul. Four people because I knew Taryn and then three other people. And I was dreading the part where I have a full belly. The dance floor gets cleared out. The music starts to play. And I am expected to shake it, baby, shake it. Mm -hmm. I was very much not looking forward to that moment. I don't like those moments very much. Shake your tail feathers. I don't know how to dance. I have no rhythm. I have two moves. And it's not good. Neither of those moves are good. So I was very insecure. And I was thinking about it. I was catastrophizing. And the music came on. And I went and shook my little tail feather. Mm -hmm. And here was my thought. Here was my thought the whole time. One, it's almost there's almost an unsaid agreement that when you go on the dance floor, you're going to look like an idiot and everybody's going to look like an idiot, but nobody's going to say anything to each other about looking like an idiot. Mm -hmm. And that that was my thought process of, look, everybody's thinking about how they look. They're not thinking about how I look. 100%. Everybody is probably more afraid of... They are probably judging themselves more hard than I would be judging them. I'm definitely judging myself way more critically than anybody else is and I had a blast that is the most fun I've ever had at a wedding I had an absolute blast now nice. did I have a whiskey maybe maybe I did have a whiskey did I have two whiskeys maybe I did have two whiskeys but by the time that the dancing was happen happening the whiskeys had worn off I will admit that I did have two whiskeys earlier they had worn off by the time we were dancing but I had a blast that would not have been able to happen if I didn't have this conversation with myself. I was really afraid. I'm telling you, I was I was nervous. That is one of those things I, I haven't, going back to overcoming, I don't know if overcoming is a real thing, I haven't overcome that yet. There are certain places where I fear judgment, and that is one of them. A big social environment like that, that is one of them. But I had that conversation with myself, and I said, look, Kev, nobody cares about you as much as you care about yourself. Not in a negative way, but nobody cares. Nobody's looking at you as much as you're looking at yourself from the outside. Nobody cares. Everybody's thinking about themselves. Everybody's sweating their butt off. A lot of these people are probably hammered. They're not going to remember any of this tomorrow. Why don't you use this as an opportunity to get outside of your comfort zone and take pride in the fact that you're going to have fun. Take pride in the fact that you're going to do something that scares you. Take pride in the fact that it's going to be uncomfortable, but discomfort is a good thing. So that's my story for this episode. First and foremost, talking about insecurities here, fears. Uh, I'm insecure that I forgot to turn my fan off. So my fan is on right now. If you can hear that, I apologize. It's cranking. Kev, okay. I remember early on, you and I, way, way, way back, probably six, seven years ago, you said, what are you thinking about when you go to the bar? Because you had wanted to go to a bar and not drink, but you yes. were insecure at the bar. And you wanted to fear chase. You remember said conversation? Of course. So we go to the bar. Kevin drinks. <laughs> I believe I had a vodka Red Bull, if I do recall correctly. Yeah. Just and, one. Uh, one down from my place typical hopping, seven. Man. Yeah, yeah. That Up place. In New Hampshire. What was the name of that place? Oh, man. I think it, it was either, I think it was the Peddler's Daughter, I believe. Yeah, it's a weird name. Did you have anything else to add? Uh, Yeah, no, yeah. I had one vodka Red Bull down from my normal seven yes that's all <laughs> yeah just that down from my <laughs> typical seven back then 
And I remember you and I had a conversation on the Hyperconscious podcast back then. And it was about what are you thinking about when you walk into a bar? And like, are you thinking about I'm the man or do you think, you know, I'm so confident or all that stuff? I said, honestly, I'm not really thinking about myself. I said, I'm others conscious, not self-conscious. I think that the opposite of self-conscious is others conscious. I think others conscious means you're focused on facilitating a good time. You're focused on achieving a goal. You're focused on, I mean, even right now. I'm my focus is not what's on my face. My focus was on the fan. That's why I called the elephant out in the room because I just want to get it out of the way. Oh crap! Left my fan on. Be vulnerable. My bad. Fifteen hundred and two episodes, and I'm still out here jumping. <laughs> it, it's so interesting. You and I talked about this recently. The person who owns their insecurities is actually less insecure. When you hide insecurities, they get bigger. When you reveal insecurities, they they get smaller. It's one of those weird dualities, one of those weird paradoxes. And so right now on the podcast, my focus is not on what I'm insecure about. It's on adding value. It's on the goal. It's on the outcome. It's on the approach. It's on what I'm saying, what I'm not saying, what I'm choosing to say. And I think that when you have goals, when you have... So you at the wedding, your goal was to have as much fun as possible. In order to do that, you have to dance. And to for Taryn to have as much fun as possible. Exactly. Others conscious. See, it's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. And when you make it bigger than you, you get bigger. That's got to be one of the best principles in the world. I was talking to a client yesterday. I said, listen, we're all climbing mountains. Some of us are climbing Mount Wachusett. Some of us are climbing the Appalachian Trail. Some of us are climbing Mount, Mount Everest. I looked it up earlier. 6,338 people have climbed Mount Everest. I said, what's the statistics on that? What's the So what percentage of the population has climbed Mount Everest? I did the math. I did 6,338 divided by 8 billion. I rounded up. I don't think it's 8 billion yet, but we're headed there for the global population. Mm-hmm. And it's 0.000079% of the population. And the reason I was actually saying this, and this is actually vulnerable for me to share, but the reason I was saying this is because I wanted to figure out why some of the personal development content doesn't resonate with me. And I realized that no one's making content for 0.000079% of the population. Mm. Right. And so on this show, we're trying to make it relevant to our listeners. And if you have a podcast on how to climb Mount Everest, you're only going to reach, you know, 10,000 people, you know, hi, my name's John Larito, And I just wanted to uh, give a big shout out to Kevin Palmieri, I had uh, reached out to him. He had been referred to me when I had shared with a friend of mine some interest in uh, doing a podcast. And he said, you've got to use Kevin. He's fantastic. He's the best around. He'll get you started and off the ground and and, uh, soaring high. Uh, Kevin was phenomenal in terms of leading me through the whole process. And not just easy to work with, but really, really knows his stuff. So whether you're looking for somebody to, to help you and get you started or somebody as I've done, where I'm putting it entirely in his hands because I've got total trust and confidence in him. Any of those ends of the spectrum, you're going to have a lot of success and a lot of fun working with Kevin. Trust me. Thanks. And so anyways, to bring this back, we're all climbing mountains. Whatever mountain you're climbing, climb it well. You don't have to climb Mount Everest. You can climb whatever mountain you choose, but make sure... It's a mountain that forces you to face these insecurities that we're talking about here and make sure it's bigger than you. It needs to be bigger than you. That's what others' consciousness is about. Self-conscious people, and we've all been there, it's about us. I talked about at a Relationship Talks event how I'm insecure. I was insecure in the past about my nose. I broke my nose really bad. I actually went to graduation with my nose on the other side of my face. In a basketball game, I got a headbutt. And I lost the symmetry in my nose. And as a model, symmetry is one of the most important things scientifically for good looks. And I was really insecure about it. So I would wear this hat. I would always wear a hat because when the light hits it a certain way, it's Mm. crooked. And now instead of hiding, instead of hiding my nose under a hat, I just owned it. I was like, okay, perfectly imperfect. And I think that that's what you do. 
you're not going to be a good dancer. There's two ways to to be not embarrassed on the dance floor. You go take dance courses. Or... I know I know some people that are Matt. Matt is a good dancer. Uh, well, he's probably practiced, and I bet you it's out of fear of embarrassment. I don't know. He can move. That dude. You think move. it just comes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Most so. of our greatness is is built on insecurities. I mean, dude, one of the reasons we get good at stuff is so that we're not embarrassed. That's why you and I get good at podcasting. I'm still and to add value because we're climbing a mountain of <laughs> impact. But my point is, is Kev, there's two ways. You either decide to be a great dancer and to be a dancer and to add value dancing, or you decide to overcome your insecurity or you practice dancing for your next wedding. Mm. And I think that if you're not going to practice dancing for your next wedding, just own the fact that you aren't a great dancer and do your thing. I, so Alan and I have been talking, I'm going to pop off in a, a couple minutes here. We've been talking about, I'm going to go back to jujitsu and I'm super excited, but I'm also terrified for sure. There's a part of me. It's just going into a new environment where 99.9% .9 of the people could be better than me mm -hmm. for sure. And again, I'll, I'm sure I'll match up with people who are similar skill wise but I had that moment of, oh, I'm going to get judged. Luckily, the martial arts community is one of the most respectful, especially the jiu-jitsu community is very respectful more often than not. And I read a lot of reviews in this place. But there was a part of me that that had that thought. And th this is really what helps it land for me. If you're afraid of... If you're afraid of judgment, there's two things. One, you're not fully right with yourself yet. Where you have the correction of when I leave here, I'm going to go home and everything is going to be totally fine. I'm going to be very certain in who I am as a man. It's going to be fine. This is only a moment. This is a moment of judgment. This is an experience. This is a situation. This is a scenario. When I go back home, it'll be fine. Maybe you don't, you're not right with yourself at that level yet. And there are certain arenas where I'm not. Obviously the wedding was a good test. I passed that test. I know I'll pass the, the jujitsu test as well. But I think it's one of those things where which one are you more scared of, jujitsu or dancing at a wedding? Dancing at a wedding. I've done jujitsu, so I'm not really. I'll pick it up quick. We'll be good. We'll be good. Mm -hmm. And there's also other things. I know the more humble you are in a martial arts setting, the more respect you get. You don't have to be good to get respect. If you're humble, you're going to be fine. That's one of the keys of of martial arts. So if you're a humble person, you're willing to learn. You're gonna you're gonna do great. I think there's also a thought of this is how I'm supposed to look versus this is how other people are seeing me. I think that's where the judgment comes from. I, look at this person. This person's breaking it down. I can't do that. That's how I'm supposed to look. No, no, no. You're not supposed to look the same as everybody else. You're supposed to look the way you look. And then the last you ever thing is... You see that movie where they break into dance and, and there's a scene, I forget what comedy, where they're like, yeah, go figure. Every single person in this movie is a professional dancer. <laughs> something no, like I don't, that. I you don't know. know. What, uh, damn. I not probably, another teen movie or something. I don't know. Oh, that's a, that's an old school. That's a throwback. Yeah. I've def Maybe I've seen it, but... Again, your memory is better than I. Last thing before we go. This is my next level nugget. If your expectation of yourself, if you don't know what your expectation of yourself is, you're probably going to fear judgment. If you don't know what to expect from yourself, how could you ever not be afraid of what everybody else is expecting of you too? That would be my next level nugget. Something to, to chew on. I'm reading a book right now called Flip the Switch by Michael Burt, and it's all about activating your drive. It's all about drive, the science of how to ignite your motivation and your drive. There's five activators, he calls them. One of them is embarrassment. Mm. I just wanted to share this little nugget. Fear of embarrassment actually drives people. And I, I've used this before, but every not everyone. Most people, I said this once and someone's like, I didn't work out before my wedding. I was like, ah, damn. I used to say everyone works out before their wedding. Hmm. most people work out consistently before their wedding because they're afraid of embarrassment. They're going to be on camera. They want the wedding video to look good. They want to look good at their wedding. They want to feel good at their wedding. There's a lot of motivators, but at the end of the day, one of them is embarrassment. So Kev, your fear of being embarrassed at this jujitsu gym is going to get you to be more humble, to work harder, to motivate you to learn more. Maybe you'll watch some videos or already whatever. Did, son. Done. You already did. Yeah, See, you fine. already did. I'm convinced that fear of embarrassment can drive you or it can shut you down. And I hope that it drives you. It's my next level nugget.
Right on. All right, we get a pop because we both have stuff to do. Next Level Nation, if you have not joined our private Facebook group, Next Level Nation, yet, please do. It is a great place to be the authentic, vulnerable version of yourself. And maybe if you're afraid of judgment, it's a good place to test the waters of that judgment. Tomorrow, for episode number 1503, happy Saturday tomorrow, your deepest fear also creates your biggest strength. So we're kind of going to piggyback on what we talked about today. So I'm excited for that one as well. As always, we love you. We appreciate you. Grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Keep owning your insecurities. Next Level Nation.